In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, the disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Man had waited for over 4,000 years for the seed of woman who would come and crush the head of Satan, according to the prophecy given in Genesis. This Jesus, who would be the Messiah, would come like no other prophet because he wasn't just a prophet. He wasn't speaking about God. He was speaking as God. He was the Word who, the Word who was with God and was God. The Word who shared a common nature with God. And in John chapter 1 and verse 14, who became flesh and walked among us. And now this Jesus is going to open his mouth and to teach us about the most important things in life. And the first word out of his mouth is blessed. And then he goes on to give what we call today the Beatitudes. I'm going to begin a series of podcasts on the Beatitudes of Jesus. And in this introduction, I want to start off by saying that there is, according to Jesus, a a state of mind that is mentally and psychologically beyond happiness, and it's called blessedness. This blessedness is very hard to explain to a non-Christian. In fact, I don't know if you can explain it to a person who hasn't come to know Jesus Christ, because the highest state and the most valued state of mind in the world is happiness. We live in a world, a country, that guarantees every man freedom and the pursuit of happiness. But at its best, happiness is fleeting. It's extremely fragile. It's all linked to the circumstance and happenstance around a person. You can be happy in the morning and sad in the evening. You can be happy one day and devastated the next because it's all based upon what's going on around you. Now, the big difference between happiness and and blessedness is that blessedness doesn't depend on circumstance. In fact, you can be blessed, which includes happy, even in the midst of extreme trials and suffering. Now, don't get me wrong. Blessedness is a state of mind that comes from following the Beatitudes. It's it's more than just calling myself a Christian. It's more than going to church. It's mentally and psychologically becoming what the Beatitudes describe. I look at the Beatitudes as God's holy mountain that you climb and that each beatitude is connected to the one before it. In fact, I'll go so far as to say that really you can't have one of these beatitudes without having the one previous to it. You can use the beatitudes as I have in my own life to conquer addictions and problems 
And sometimes I find myself going back to the Beatitudes over and over again to deal with issues in my life, to get a fresh mindset on what I have to become mentally. But you can conquer your trials and even life itself with the Beatitudes. By way of introduction, I just want to say that, that I want to comment on where it was that Jesus delivered these Beatitudes, because I think that's important. You see, it's, it's so different from the old covenant when, when God gave his law on Mount Sinai through Moses. When he gave his law, it was amid thunder and lightning and earthquakes. And the people were told that they were to gather around the mountain and create a base. And, and even if a dumb animal was to, to touch the base of that mountain, a million hands were to reach for stones to kill it. Because you see, it was a frightening and awesome thing to face the law of God on your own. That delivering of the law was so frightening that the people begged Moses for God to stop speaking because at first he spoke those commandments verbally and it sounded like thunder coming from the mountain and they couldn't take it anymore. But on the other hand, here Jesus walks up to the top of a grassy hill and he sits down and he starts telling people about the different attitudes that can bring them a blessedness that is beyond happiness. It's all about approach to God. You see, law is a good thing. Without law, we couldn't live. Law actually illustrates love. If I love you, I won't steal from you. I won't try to kill you. I won't say, take false witness against you. But law can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. And through Jesus, we have total accessibility to God. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. And that's what the Beatitudes are all about. Giving us a state of mind that will allow us to be happy no matter what happens. That's the Beatitude that we're talking about. The Beatitudes that are blessedness. I know it's a state of mind beyond happiness because... In our very text, it says that you can be blessed even when people are saying all kind of evil against you falsely and persecuting you. By following these beatitudes, we can adopt to ourself. We can learn how to react, to respond to life instead of reacting to life. And whatever circumstance we're in, it doesn't matter. We can face that circumstance with a blessed happiness that goes beyond circumstance. I don't know if I've shared this before in the podcast, but I really like Zig Ziglar. And he talks about coming from a, a con convention that he spoke at in Atlanta, I believe it was. And as he came up to the counter at the airport, the lady behind the counter said, I've got some bad news for you. He said, what's that? And she said, your flight has been canceled. And he says, outstanding. And she said, outstanding? How can that be outstanding? He said, ma'am, if that flight's been canceled, 
That means there's something wrong with the pilot or there's something wrong with the weather or there's something wrong with the airplane and I don't want to be on that airplane if any of those things are wrong. And she kind of smiled and said, okay. But then she said, well, I've got some more bad news for you. That's the way life is. Sometimes bad news after bad news. He said, what's that? And she said, the next flight doesn't leave for six hours. And he goes, outstanding. And she said, come on now, you really can't mean that. He said, no. He says, I've got plenty of work to do in my briefcase and I can sit in this airplane and I can watch the people go by and I can see people come and and loving on each other when they come off the plane and, and I can go over to the restaurant and eat something. Now, do I really believe that Zig Ziglar responded that way? Yes, I do. Because Zig Ziglar knew the secret to life that you can choose how you're going to respond to a situation instead of react. He could have reacted. He could have beaten on that counter. And he could have said, don't you people know how to run an airplane or an airline? Can't you find a pilot? Can't you get a plane that's working? Beat on the counter, his blood pressure go up, and the plane would have still left six hours later. The Beatitudes are a way of looking at life and responding to life that are so powerful. They can make you happy even when you're in the midst of a terrible situation. They can give you the power to face addictions in your life and to overcome them. I look forward to the next few podcasts with you to share with you these Beatitudes. If this podcast has been an encouragement to you, then you can find more at johndkimbrough.com. Thank you.